continuing on with our Archon podcast series. Now that I've gotten through an introduction and pretty much provided an overview as to what I think is taking place, I want to hone in and focus on how men can be easily controlled in the world of Archons. And many men aren't aware that this is taking place. Even religious men, men that think that they're spiritual, a lot of them don't see it coming. A lot of men, a lot of human beings don't understand their own sexuality, but for the purpose of this conversation, we will, we will focus on male sexuality and how men are easily controlled in the archonic world through their lust for women and how the very uh, reproductive equipment that the male possesses is the very thing that can lead him to a world of bondage, to a world of suffering. It is important to keep in our consciousness as we look at these troubling aspects of our society that we understand that we may be here for a reason to evolve beyond such things, to keep that in our focus as we look at the situation that we find ourselves in as a society, as we ask ourselves, why are we in this predicament? Why is this type of consciousness, this device of consciousness on the planet at this time that is going so contrary to basic human values? And so it is important for every man that seeks to be sovereign to understand that there are many ways in which men have become slaves to women through their own desire to fornicate and or be with women. It is also very clear to me that highly attractive women in today's day and age, on today's uh, planet, oftentimes play host, play host to certain entities that seek to have the attention on them in almost an unnatural, illogical, obsessive, compulsive sort of way to where the purpose of that attention has no real purpose in terms of serving humanity or helping humanity. There seems to be something within the human blueprint uh, a narcissistic gene that can be itched, if you will, uh, to develop an obsession with creating a reality where someone else is obsessed with you, where someone else is chasing you, where someone else is devoting all their time, their focus, and their attention, what they place their gaze on, what they stare at. And there is a lot of this behavior in today's day and age, on the part of women, and also a lot of mixed signals, in this particular reality or dimension that we're living in this this universe, there are a number of things that have been inverted, uh, meanings of words that have been inverted, symbols have been inverted. It's also a planet where mental illness in today's day and age is discussed on a regular basis, schizophrenia, people hearing voices, people doing things that one would think a a regular rational human being would not do. Amazing crimes of passion, people acting as if they're possessed, doing things that ultimately are detrimental to themselves in the process, a backwards reality, a backwards realm. In terms of human relationships, how do we see the backwards realm? Do we see evidence of the backwards realm, the inversion? When we see humans today, modern homo sapiens, earth women, behaving in a way to draw attention to themselves, their own sexuality, only to return negative energy or a psychic attack towards those men that actually end up looking at that which they are not advertising for sale, (laughs) but they are displaying. Or said another way, advertising what's not for sale. Uh, There is something going on within human consciousness within many females on the planet at this time. In which they act in a manner to draw energy to them. And today, in today's day and age, with the ongoing breakup of the family, with many people living their lives in misery, with many people under forms of mind control, with many people on the planet today, many men and women, many women and men, uh, with no sense of morality, uh, sexual or otherwise, no no consequences for one's actions. 
and a world of technology at their fingertips. Uh, so with uh, the world of technology and the cell phones and the concept of technology replacing normal human relationships, uh, today's cell phone has provided has provided a sense of freedom and liberation on one level. In another way, the cell phone, technology, social media can also be a tool to make it easier to play someone, to use someone, to use as a means of surveillance, to deeply surveil uh, one's thoughts and opinions uh, through what is available on the internet and or social media and or YouTube. Uh, and that is based upon a implanted uh unrealistic expectation. There are many unrealistic or ridiculous expectations that we're programmed to expect from other people. And there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people don't find love in their own lives is because they've been programmed to have these wild expectations uh, of things that are basically unattainable or things that relate to hierarchy. Who has the most money? Who has the most toys? Who is the king in the world of materialism? And this, this aspect of humanity to lean toward materialism is so dominant that even if someone's clothing and supposed culture is about counterculture, even if someone looks like a hippie, uh, even if uh, the woman in question seems like a free child or an independent thinker, there is still basic physical rules uh, of physics dealing with our biology and our biological inclination. And human beings, men and women, can override their base biological inclinations, but the most don't do that regardless of whatever mass they show. And so there is this, this world of generations of generations of people procreating with certain types of personalities. And where we're at now is like the end result of a long chain of a, of a biological procreation wheel. And it's important for people to really contemplate why we are in the situation that we're in without attributing blame, even if we're looking at the behavior of each of the perceived sexes, different sexes. And it is important to do that, to look at men and women uh, uniquely and independently, to understand how the world got in the situation that it's in, and to set aside a sense of ego that one sex is better than the other or that one sex or either sex or humanity in general is inherently perfect. We're not inherently perfect. And that unconscious aspect of human nature that people so often refer to, oh, it's just human nature, uh, I think is actually more like an archon hijacking of consciousness. Especially when you have people that are acting in a, in a robotic, automated manner, showing themselves to be easily programmed. Uh, I think that when you're looking at that world of hierarchy and uniformity that some allow, some humans allow themselves to be put in, uh, that is the archon world of rulership, of control. And we can see how people are serving those aspects of the system, uh, men and women today. But in this conversation, we are talking about relationships uh, and how you see, you see how humanity creates its world through the actual men that are picked to carry on the genes forward to the next generation. And so we're seeing a number of things happening within social engineering today, not only in the feminization of men, uh, but also aspects in which we are divided as men are being feminized, which alarms me because to me it is a, a hallmark of uh, steps towards uh, controlling the human species in such a way, manipulating it in such a way, to where if there was a threat upon the human species, there would be, in, in many cases, a, a lack of the male protector, the sacred masculine, coming to protect the sacred feminine. It seems that this break within consciousness that's playing itself out in duality and male-female and the perceived gender warfare is it's something very real and it is something taking place either in the cosmos or also a, a result of what the earth has been going through. Going back to my thoughts about Portland, a place I've called the city of the, the wounded goddess, fallen to these archonic entities, uh, 
uh, coming in the form of the psychotic, psychopathic humans that destroy nature and, and create their little, you know, wonderlands of, of hatred and rape and destruction and war and police states and dungeons and torture. The very things that people think are solely just humankind is truly coming from somewhere else. And so we can identify now with technology, with statistics, uh, you know, we're, we're aware that we're in a realm where there's a psychosis with then homo sapien females on our planet today to go back to the abuser, the man that beats her. And we can see how this plays out in the system, system worship. And also going back to technology, the cell phones have replaced the male protector in a way in today's world. It is easy in today's day and age to use uh, a piece of technology made by a slave in a, in a slave plant in China. And that is seen as a conscious new age to where these devices, and also not to mention the lithium coming from Afghanistan, you have a whole aspect of blood minerals, if you will, conflict minerals, or areas on the planet where there are conflicts, where there are resources that are pulled from those lands that end up in our batteries, that end up in our homes, that end up in our lives. And that's what ties us to the system. So the very thing that is responsible for someone else's slavery, someone else will be selfishly thinking about their own freedom. And while uh, we have been in this age of, in some positive ways, uh, kind of a shift from the way things were to the way things are in terms of women's rights, there's been some positive moves forward. And then there's also been some steps back. There's been some steps back and there's been a lot of demonization uh, in relation to men in the old world. In today's day and age, what I can tell you is that with technology, we can clearly see what is taking place in different countries and you can clearly see that there is a huge, massive support uh, from the female population for today's servant of that system that has brought so much destruction. Now, without getting specific, I think people know what I'm talking about. And nothing has changed along those lines in recent years. Uh, seeing a change within female society to where the men in the society that are trying to affect change or go their own way or be on a more spiritual path, a non-materialistic path, they are still as unrecognized as they've always been. You know, the, the, the terminology, nice guys finishing last, didn't start yesterday. It's been around for a long time. And so it, this isn't actually about blaming women, but actually taking an honest look at what biology is is directing human beings towards and raising the question about the nature of our biology being that there are some people that that worship nature it's one thing to respect nature and enjoy nature and go into nature to meditate it's another to worship certain things and i'm not coming at this from a religious perspective uh, but this is a period in time where people forget basic concepts and values and their beliefs uh end up towards worship not only of some of these external things and looking outside of oneself for salvation, uh, but falling into the false religious mindset of trying to get others to worship you. And some people don't know that they're doing that. And in today's day and age, because men are controlled by their sexuality, because the wiring within us is men to make more human beings, because in this realm, it's a, it's a realm where there's a lot of human beings emitting a lot of energy, more human beings, more energy, more staged events, more, more human beings controlled, sent to war. And there's a whole world of control over the world of man. And it also seems very obvious that there's a larger population on the planet here on earth for some very specific reasons. And it deals with control and it deals with the harvesting of those energies. And the reason why we have large cities on ley lines, dense population centers where many people are having their energies harvested today. And so many people are wired men and women, women and men in their own unique way in this matrix 
And with a lot of men, you know, it's like the movie The Matrix where Morpheus warned against being hypnotized by the woman in the red dress. And so just knowing how popular pornography is in the society, and I'm going to try to address this without judging or sounding religious. I just want you to stay with me on this point and just be conscious. Just observe, if you will. All right. I want you to open up your consciousness and see reality as it is. Uh, how, how deeply, uh, messed up the media is with the sexualization of the youth and using sex to sell and how well it works, how well it works on not only men, but women, women that also lust after the naked female torso because of that, whatever's been tinkered within our physical body, not to be confused with our spiritual body or our soul, but that monkey like aspect of mankind that is constantly like almost wired programmed to chase the female torso, whether it has a head or not, which is why we often see the female torso in Budweiser ads. It's like something very macabre, almost necrophiliac like. It's almost something that is of such a lower nature and consciousness. I mean, what we're dealing with now and discussing is beyond what most human beings have ever contemplated. But our natural state of being, just like the natural state of being of the squirrels and and ducks that are running around raping each other every spring, just because something's in our nature and our physical makeup and that of the animals, is that who we really are? And so it seems to me when you look at men and women both enjoying the, the, the strip club and enjoying just like the, the uh, expression of the idol, the dancing false idol or goddess, dancing on a stage elevated, staring at the legs, losing oneself to lust. This is like a, a I just described to you many cities today where you see many men discarded by today's society, especially older, older men and sexism and classism on steroids with, with the hotter chick getting the job at the restaurant, at the post office, at the market. And is this really what women's rights, is this real feminism? Is this true women's rights? Is this true women's lip? When we know this is really about the tax code with getting more women in the workplace, but it's more than that. It's more than getting the taxes from the female. It's altering society and changing society in an unnatural way. And when you travel now in America to different cities and you look at the homeless problem, you're seeing more men than women. You're also seeing women, older women, maybe women that may have been considered unattractive by society thrown to the wolves. Also very callous, what has been done to many women that are not playing the game that they want women to play. So there's many good women and many good men in the society today, but you're not seeing them represented uh, on the media. And there's a lot of good men and good women out there that may not show that they have a goodness in them because good men and good women come under attack in this realm. And so a lot of women are very protective And they walk with a lot of fear, but unfortunately, not all of them are fully aware that there is such a, such a thing as the arconic realms that has created a world to where they are intentionally meant to be in fear all the time, fear of rape, fear of danger. This way they're kept subservient to the government structures. Now, ultimately those government structures, those arconic structures are behind the same patriarchy that some women say they're against, against patriarchy, but they've confused it with just men or masculine energy. See, things are so confused now and no one knows why anyone's enslaved. So through the mass media, through forms of mind control uh, that I would say take place in the dream realm, And some of the new age movements that have perverted things, especially teachings about masculine and feminine. This is not about masculine male dominance, nor is this about white supremacy. There's a form of domination and control over the planet now that supersedes all of that. But they want to keep people in these boxes of thinking that it's just about one sex. Citing certain examples and aspects of history, but selective aspects of history. If we look at the, what the history being written now We are seeing men discarded simply because they're men and because of the world of money, the obsession with money. Even if a man is a good man, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have value.
He doesn't have real protective value. He doesn't have any value whatsoever to that female that is looking at him as a prospective mate. Now, one thing that I've learned through my own personal experiences with women is how easily their dreams could be invaded and how easily they can be convinced that certain things are true. And how even though there are women that say they don't want to believe in such things, whether it be archons, demons, jinn, ghosts, whatever name you use, they certainly seem really quick to buy into the idea that maybe my myself created that dream. That I'm the one that's that powerful. That I would have that type of intention. So there's a resistance to the fact that archons may be manipulating people's dreams, but people are real quick to label other humans as evil. We keep coming back to that theme, that nihilist theme, which seems to be more of a program of the archons than anything else, to suspect humanity, to, to want to step on and control the masculine and or feminine. And we also see a, a lack of intelligence. We see ignorance. We see women becoming defensive and thinking that this is misogynist behavior, thinking that I hate women, or like people thinking I hated Portland when I was discussing really the energetic spiritual rape of Portland. So there, there are forms of Stockholm Syndrome currently underway uh, to where what I'm saying actually isn't even being understood. It's being perceived as an actual attack, believe it or not. And explain to me how this isn't some sort of example of severe, hardcore uh, dumbing down of the consciousness. And when we talk about the realm of dreams, a lot of people look at dreams as something that inherently is something that is giving them the truth. Uh, about a person or a situation. And in multiple times I've been told firsthand accounts uh, from women that I've known about some of the things that have come into their dreams and even voices coming in that will say things like this guy can't be trusted or this guy is worthless. And after you hear this type of script repeated, almost robotic like from people over the years that switch their personality, uh, it's clear that uh, there seems to be some hardware within the human female that is so easily to hijack a program to be turned against an individual, uh, to be turned against her own intuition. Uh, that there are forces in this matrix that can literally switch off someone's not only intuition, but their hormones. And what I've also seen through my own life experience is some women come in with a sexual interest simply because they actually are vampires. Uh, almost as if they're an agent of the matrix that are there to come in to get a readout on your energy through the collection of semen, through the connection of the, the, the sexual act of intercourse. And it's through having intercourse with certain people that certain people can have entity attachments or can have their energy sucked or could become vulnerable to certain things. And this is why, uh, for thousands of years, countless years, there are such a thing as abstinence from sexual activity, from um, substance abuse, from wild thrills in general. And for thousands of years, there's a reason why both men and women, uh, but especially men, have chosen to abstain from sexual activity, uh, from the world of, of lustful things. Not to say, I support the idea of suppressing oneself. I'm not even going to go that far into even talking about morality and what's right and what's wrong. There are certain aspects, obviously, involving sexuality that involves pleasure. What I'm arguing here is that there, there's a reason why uh, we've been wired a certain way and for there to be pleasure centers in our brain to begin with. Not to demonize anything, but to, but to bring forth in the conversation the idea that there has been potentially a great deal of toying with our genetics and our general makeup to continue to breed a certain type of human being with a certain type of consciousness. And the core of that, the core of that breeding program, just like human beings have breeding programs for animals, and just like human beings have done experiments with rice and, and mice, and the government has, not just our governments, but to others, uh, to learn about our own biology, also being mammals. I think the same thing is going on with us in the human procreation machine. And so... From everything that I've experienced in the dating realm and experiencing uh, different brief relationships and friendships with women, understanding female psychology, and the things that 
turn them on, interest them that I find to be a little odd. And certainly the things that I would think that a good woman would be attracted to seeing very little attraction to. Uh, a lifetime in the alternative media has shown me that this is mostly of movement that interests males. That it is not something that regardless of the few women that are involved in the alternative media, uh, for the most part, they are not feeling called to this message. And there are far more uh, females than males that seem to have been called uh, to bring forth the fake, artificial, channeled information from the Archons, uh, either through a variety of names. And there are some men that have joined them as well. There are men that I have met as well that talk about traveling to 44 dimensions on the astral plane, which is not necessarily anything to do with Source. And there are so many that have lost themselves in New Age circles and movements that it's like been one giant counterfeit revolution. Through my own upbringing with my mother and through some of the women that I've met and coming across a lot of uh, new age disinformation, it's clear to me that there are a fair amount of women that are under full-on archon hijack consciously that have never considered whether their thoughts are their own. And so you can see somebody living out their lives one way, treating their children one way, uh, subjectifying men their own way based on how much money a man has or based on how entertaining he is, like a dancing clown being a servant uh, to each of her uh, increasingly demanding um, moments, uh, needing attention, needing energy, not necessarily financial, but sometimes including financial. Uh, we see people that preach certain things, you know, wear the flowers in their hair like some sort of flower child. And in reality, it's like if you, if you put aside the beauty of the physical female, which is really a carbon copy, uh, very similar to other uh, females throughout history that were born attractive because we're in a matrix where the forces that be of biology want to see a large human population under control throughout thousands of years, continuing to procreate like wild bunnies, from birth to death, from birth to death. And a similar type of consciousness being procreated over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And of course, women's rights and the dignity of a woman and protecting the divine feminine are all very important. But what's also important is for the women in this world to be responsible and realize they are bringing forth the vessels of life into this world. And live in a life where everything is about them and about serving them and paying their bills and, uh, you know, blaming just men for the world's problems. There hasn't really been accountability on the part of women, on the men that they have picked to bring children into this world with. There hasn't really been a response from the world's female population as to why there's so much domestic, so many domestic violence crisis centers where women go back to the man that beats them and they go back to the center or the state and they go back and forth. There's many cases of this. There's something within human consciousness, both men and women, which are very much connected and responsible for the psychology of the other. And I am very much a proponent of basic fundamental concepts that break down the illusions of separation. It both takes both a man and a woman to make both a man and a woman. So therefore both men and women are responsible for the behavior of both men and women. And when we split out in this world of duality and we are either a male or a female, there are certain ways we can be custom targeted to be controlled, controlled for the purpose of the children being controlled that are to come out of the female. And that, to do that, the female consciousness has to be targeted to where she is turned on by certain men and she is turned off by certain men. And in her actual biology, there are ways that something could come in and flip it on and flip it off. Flip it on and flip it off. And this is not discussed at all. This is probably one of the most taboo topics that there is. To discuss the concept that not only are people's thoughts not necessarily their own, but I would say that there's a lot of control over people's sexuality. And from some of the experiences that I've had, including one night stand experiences and relationships, there is a massive chunk of the human female population 
that prefers the bad boy dominator. Not so much bad boy against the New World Order, but bad boy in terms of servant of the New World Order. Uh, Goomba, gangster, cop, uh, soldier, uh, punk, asshole. Uh, you know, the guy that slaps the girl. Uh, rough guy, tough dude. And there's an aspect of of the female biology that's been programmed and manipulated by the archons to interpret that as a good protector. And so there are decisions that females make, whether they're aware of this consciously or not, that are actually detrimental to them based on the cues that they're getting from their biology. Uh, There isn't this type of awareness that perhaps there's been some perversion of their sexuality, inversion, being that we're living in a fallen world, uh, being that we're living in the world of the archons. Even amongst the women that do shows about archons, uh, some of them are very much in the mindset of uh, just being about patriarchy or men controlling women. Uh, Some of them are probably still in denial as to what's going on. Some of them might, because they're older, may not know what's happening to the younger generation. The amount of young men and older men that have been discarded by society, that are living out of their vehicles, that are opting out of society, that are not in the materialistic game. Because the world's gone through some major transitions in recent years. So what we're seeing on this planet is not a collective shift in consciousness for the better. Because when we see a collective shift in consciousness, we're going to see women uh, actually genuinely interested in living in freedom. Uh, They're going to be very concerned about just walking around, depending on their cell phones all the time, living in the grid. Uh, They're going to start to see how artificial and really disgusting their little lives are, living in the city, uh, using disgusting tampons, and just basically contributing to like a giant uh, litter uh, trash pool. Just imagine like all the litter generated and pollution. Uh, and, and, and garbage generated by all the purchases, all the perfumes, all the toxic foods. And I want you to think about all the men in today's society that are trapped in their own lower sexuality, uh, that may be with a woman that, uh, he feels brings him a very powerful orgasm based on, uh, her physical appearance and the fact that it's simulating baby making, whether or not he wants to have a baby or not. And think about all the things that that man is willing to do for that woman, to bring her those things. And think about the actual game that she's playing with him. Uh, The ongoing, uh, nod, nod, wink, wink, this is open prostitution, but we're not going to call it that. Oh no, we're not going to call it that. But that is in fact what most of the relationships are with today's American woman. It's an ongoing experience of prostitution. Some of the recent experiences that I've had have been very eye-opening to energy manipulation, psychic warfare, uh, emotional terrorism, and seeing how the very people that you think uh, are your friends, the very people that you think are trying to help you, are in fact, whether they know it or not, operating and acting on behalf of something else. And so the very thing that people, uh, the very things that people take drugs for, the mood swings, the hearing of the voices, uh, there's a whole other world to this world that interfaces with men and women. And that's not really taken into account in our culture. And there are many Native Americans that have been murdered and tortured uh, by this government uh, in its early days of inception, which is just an expansion of the Vatican, you know, the British Empire, you know, the Roman Empire. Uh, the American government, when it came over, you know, the, the guys of freedom, but bringing the same terrorism to the native peoples. All that, all that and more. And the environmental degradation, the poisoning of the rivers, the offspring, the, uh, the children of the children of the children. Uh, the people that some people think are the crystal children are really more like the children of the corn. Uh, the generations that have inherited this land are a degenerate generation. Uh, be they older, younger, black, white. Uh, you know, Hispanic, Middle Eastern. Uh, there are many greedy, uh, poor, uh, rich, doesn't matter. There are many greedy. Uh, we can call them Americans. We can call them human beings. You can call them illegals. There are many human beings that are on this planet and on this country that are massively impacted by energies left behind. And without knowing it, they're just swimming. They're just swimming in a pool of energy. And they're affected by this, whether or not they're being specifically targeted by entities or not. Uh, they're affected by the world that they live in. And so certain people, uh, you know, they want to hold up a block to this knowledge that they're affected by things and that actions of previous generations affect us. That's fine. They can go ahead and say if they don't believe in those things. It doesn't mean that they're not affected 
by the actions of the past. So when we look at cities today, uh, we look at the relationship between men and women. The question is, do we see the same prostitution game being played? How much money a man has? Uh, do we see uh, a major divide within the world of women where younger women are surpassing the world of older women because we're still playing by the same rules despite the iPhones and technology and uh, false claims of a more conscious society? Are we looking more like a conscious society where our technology is being used to better uh, the situation for all of us? Or are we seeing the walls closing in? Are we seeing the death of the family? Are we seeing women being put through these mind control camps to where, you know, by the age of 20, they can be thrown into a suit and told that, oh, it's, it's their talents that got them to where they are. And, and, and now is the time for freedom to, to take back what's theirs to war with their brother, to not see their brother, to not see another male as a protector, to fall under the spell uh, into believing that this is a better, safer, freer world with technology where all you can do is hit a panic button and a drone will come and tase your rapist, you know, or, or to live in a world where you know that there's a police force that's just waiting to protect you because you're an enlightened goddess who is living in the age of enlightenment. And thank God for this new world order. Uh, thank God for quantitative easing. Uh, thank God for shopping malls. Thank God for materialism. See, this is not consciousness. And in a more conscious society, you would not see people you would not see people okay with themselves just using pills and using drugs to silence that true feminine and beautiful spirit within. We don't see women today being honest with the problem. Instead, for the most part, they encourage men to stay in the grid and continue to, to build up that artificial nest. The modern woman is not disgusted by the man that serves the system or the new world order. He is a hero. He is a protector in her eyes and in her biology. It doesn't matter to today's day and age or woman uh, whether or not her boyfriend or husband is actually involved in helping make the world a better place. It's how she herself in that moment and her children, whether this is right or not wrong, but it is the trappings of the flesh. It's selfishly based and it's based in what can she get out of it. I will also note that there are many memories I have of women that came around when I had something or when I was working at a store or when it was perceived to be the peak of my days at Access TV, when people would come around to the meetings when 30 people were there so they can literally feed off of those energies because there was a time, and it took me a while to get to this point, this is a pretty important part of my story, there was a time where the value of my attention was perceived to have a, a higher dollar value, where there was a perception that maybe I would be in the, the big media one day when I was younger and had more of a, a childish, boyish face there was this assumption that I would join the machine and that my talents at, at speaking, at running a website, at doing a show, my passion, my uh, photographic memory in some cases, that it would lead to working with certain people or becoming recognized officially in the world of man, which hasn't happened. Um, through the traveling and whatnot and starting and, and ending Access TV, the TV show and traveling with limited money, you know, I, I've been on a very different road than other people. And so I watched certain people fade out of my life forever. And I constantly think back to those times when there were people around, it was based on the energy that the females were feeding on or feeling. And, you know, the, the prodding me out and the asking of questions, you know, uh, how was I going to make money doing outside the box TV? And then constantly the question, um, what was my plan for the future? with what I started with OTB TV. And so there is the, uh, the allure of being with a celebrity that attracts many uh, women. And uh, some people call them groupies. I think that's almost, um, I think that's a little disrespectful. And I wouldn't want to be called a groupie and I wouldn't want to call a close friend a groupie. Uh, but there were uh, times in my life where I really wanted to find a woman that would appreciate me for me. And 
this it has really been about getting my attention as, as recently as very recent to the point where help that came in somehow was payment for personal insult. And so I can see now in full color how deeply uh, manipulative and absent women can be from a man's life in this particular matrix that has dedicated his very blood, his flesh, his life, his future, everything, his soul to making the world a better place. I now know how a mother can hate her child. I now know how unlovable uh, a male can be in this dimension of reality when he truly stands against the archonic system. I now know how dreams can be invaded, how the female sex drive can be controlled, and how women can, even those that watch my YouTube channel, and and whether they make a decision, whether they reach out based on how much, you know, where they think I'm at, whether they think I I leech off people, or, or what they're able to gauge from my YouTube channel, and wondering how it might benefit them. Even if they think they have good intentions, their honest intentions, how it can benefit them, how things are perceived, and whether their own perception is a positive one at the moment, or whether it's being hijacked. Seeing people do the about 180 and change personality in less than a few hours or 23 hours. Seeing how I believe they've scrambled my own mother's brain and erased certain memories and maybe they implanted others. I know they've done things like this in the dream realm. Uh, Seeing the bad boy rise. uh, Remembering the few times, the the one night stands of the times that I was. Um briefly in the dating scene, how carnal it was, <clears throat> how lustful it was, and how empty it was of any appreciation for who I was. It was like getting in on the energy while I was perceived to be hot and be, being treated like a piece of meat in the same way or worse than the ways that men are perceived to treat women. You know, where you use someone sexually and you never talk to them again. And what I've learned from, I I guess, the first woman that I actually ever loved was that in today's day and age, it's very threatening to truly say, I love you to a woman. It's also not recommended. And to want to be monogamous. Uh, We are living in a world where the programmed uh, tapes in in uh, in the human biological machine, our sexuality, is to be attracted to uh, promiscuous people. And certainly men that are promiscuous, men that play women, men that are dominators, uh, men that are dark warriors, not light warriors, but dark warriors, you know, ones that will invade the village and, and take up the resources so there's extra tissues and tampons uh, for back in the village of the, uh, of the uh, modern day Romans. Um, th- this is what I see. I, I see the biological uh, continuation of the dominator through the procreation cycle based on the the human female sex drive. Nothing has changed in all of these hundreds of years to thousands of years. The only way that I can foresee a different reality is to be in a different planet where there are different physics, where there are different brain structures, uh, where there may even be different sexual genitalia. This world is a fallen world. This is a hell realm and domain. And this is why some of these things are happening. And this is why we're going into the machine. And this machine that we're going into, and looking at the emerging police state and all the servants of this arconic agenda, this, this is our own Frankenstein. Uh, the question is, what did we do to end up sentenced to a lifetime here? And is this our first lifetime here? Are we repeat offenders? Uh, Are we coming back to the same type of energy frequency because we ourselves don't change? Uh, Because we ourselves don't evolve? Because we ourselves don't break out of the illusions of separation? Is that why we're here? Because those are the questions that I and many others are asking ourselves. Knowing that we're far beyond um, a box labeled man, woman, black, white, American, or even earthling. Uh, There's far more to whatever we are. I don't think we're God's. Uh, maybe we are intergalactic beings, uh, but uh, the uh, the awareness that we have, the consciousness that we have in the in the in the depths of our awareness, when we can really access it, it, it is beyond this world, and we're capable of so much more. 
So being that we're capable of so much more and that there is good in each and every one of us, uh, for there to be such great distrust and manufactured gender war and to see so many uh, women in today's day and age continue uh, their own behavior, uh, especially women that claim that they're truthers, uh, people that are listening right now to this very podcast uh, that may never listen again because now they've heard something that is, of course, the most taboo subject. Female responsibility uh, in this world that we're in right now and how it got us to where we're at in conjunction with the male uh, role uh, that some males have chosen to play, those that have chosen to pick up the armaments and attack other people, uh, to attack other women, to join these armies of death, to allow themselves to be duped by other men and women on television, to allow themselves to succumb to mind control. Do you think that they're actually protecting their family when in fact their very actions are helping destroy this country? You know, there's a couple examples of that today. All we have to do is look at the examples today. The men that are working, the women that are working, the women that have been discarded, the men that have been discarded. And to take a look at the consciousness of those that are succeeding and what they care about and whether or not they're using these laws of attraction just simply to feed their own belly, to convince others to worship them as a little goddess or God, or if they're actually using their abilities to help the world. I know that the whole subject of reincarnation is controversial. Regardless, I think that there's a lot of uh, females that are on this planet right now that in their previous incarnation, they were great. And somehow or another, it is very important to that soul and evolution to go from a gray form to a human female form to experience the world that they help create. And so there are some women, it seems like they are completely new to this concept of a new world order, of manipulation that's organized, organized crime style. It's easy for them to be controlled by the media, it seems, and, and think that men in general are the enemy uh, without even realizing on a philosophical level what that says about them being the one that brings birth to that male that they so much resent. I mean, even within the logic of what they're thinking, there isn't this holistic, oh my God, then what are we as human beings if we're beasts and if men are beasts, being that women create men. But also men create women. It is absolutely necessary for a sperm cell to create this supposed divine goddess. Again, we talked about the idiocracy reality and the backwards reality. Even supposed spiritualist women have failed to really see the unity and oneness of the male-female. And they've been programmed to view this as some sort of matriarchy versus patriarchy. Is this really about women in control or men in control? It's not about that. But they've certainly kept it about that for a long, long time. And so in the same way that the media uh, can keep Democrats and Republicans fighting, and the same way that Crips and Bloods you know, can't put aside their colors in the way that they keep fighting, and the way that some other form is arming those Crips and Bloods with AK-47 so they kill themselves, men and women have been conditioned to be at odds with each other and to fear love, to monetize love. And so women today aren't seeing their love or sexuality as a gift to share, to heal a male. And likewise, many men have been programmed to give much attention to the narcissistic female that never one day in her life would ever speak for a female in the Middle East or Africa that's being victimized at the hands of the New World Order. So many American white females are being spoiled by American males and other males around the world because of her sexuality in some cases and the flaunting of the sexuality. So even though women in today's society may scowl at men and accuse them of you know, staring at their breasts or uh, uh, subjectifying them, if women were not desirable as sex objects, uh, there would not be men, there would not be uh, a society showing a whole lot of interest in protecting them. Not in this realm. It's really based on sexuality, it's based on control, it's based on protecting what's yours. And so, because it's been wired into us, men and women, to constantly want to worship the female torso, the female body, 
female sexuality. Again, this is why you have women also enjoying going to the strip club. You normally don't have heterosexual males enjoying seeing erect penises at the male strip club. It's not in line with our wiring. <clears throat> so I hope you understand. That's a perfect example of this. So there's a wiring there that's within biology that leans towards worship. And that worship leans towards the flesh. It does not lead towards spirit. And so this example alone uh, should really get people thinking. When we're in a physical world and things are aligned towards physicality and sexuality and procreation all the time, and they affect men and women on such a deep level, then they're going to be okay with that type of an arconic system that rules over women, that lusts over women. And ultimately, there are reasons why women are silent in this arconic world about the true control over other women. There are actual belief systems out there. Uh, dealing with, it's always been this way. And there are actual aspects of female biology that enjoy getting slapped during sex, that enjoy rough sex, because all that is exemplified, is the exemplification uh, of the desire for the dominator. And I'm not saying I'm being judgeful, and I don't want people to perceive this as that, but to actually absorb this knowledge of why people are so kinky, where that comes from, and why we have uh, this type of reality that we're in. And how women are responsible, just like men, that men and women both are both responsible for the whole world that we live in, for the types of babies created, for the types of people that re receive love and affection and healing, and those that are left behind for the streets for dead because a certain female or a number of females lack any desire whatsoever to help that person. It can also be noted the, uh, the archonic influence in human relationships where the few people that do come in to help have an agenda to drain one's financial resources or to use resources to control one's emotions. So money can be a, an interesting thing with relationships and friendships and women, uh, whether it's something that, that's donated so someone can emotionally terrorize someone to tear down someone's uh, actual image of their self, to create a situation where they create dependency and abandonment, or other situations where men are subjectified based on how much money they have. Uh, basically, we have a society where so much is based upon money, control of money, and it being about money, and very little dealing with true love, true compassion, uh, the, the true respect for the divine masculine, feminine, and masculine, masculine and feminine within each and every one of us. Everything is about trying to redirect one's attention for a lot of uh, people in today's day and age. Uh, with that, I'm really hitting a wall. I think that these, these truths that I've stumbled upon have really affected me. And I, I think that there are ways men can protect themselves when they face the ultimate truth, though, about the predicament that they're in. Especially for those of us that have been traumatized, that throughout our own incarnation, we've been repeatedly rejected or abused, specifically by women, and left in the street, or have had experiences where some people have pretended to be our friends only to see them continue a cycle of abandonment. Uh, it is all hallmarks of this realm being a fallen realm with a minority of the, of the world's population being able to resist Archon hijack. This is one of the reasons why I have to live where I'm living, where, where I am where I am, where I can share this thought and be far away, at least for the time being, from anything that might come and interfere with this message coming across. And there are periods where things were comfortable enough for me to, to stop talking about the programming within females today. And, and I'd always hope to see women step forward to show me that the world really isn't like that. There really are truly people that will do more than just a YouTube message. 
or email message that will actually bump into you in the flesh and show show their angel self to you. And I think that it's it's very important that good men continue to be honorable, but to not keep assuming that there are these angels out there that have our best interest at heart. Nothing's free. Nothing's free. And when the power of our attention is valuable, it becomes a commodity. It becomes a commodity. And so men have to become conscious enough to understand that their own physical senses can lead them into thinking that someone, there's a certain someone out there that they may be obsessed with or truly desire that is their twin flame, that is their soulmate, that is the woman that can heal the pain that his mother brought him or other women or the first girlfriend. Uh, Mankind, men, <clears throat> are constantly suffering from this tape inside their own psyche that they need that woman to heal or help him or her, uh, even through sexuality. And I've also noticed a uh, strong sexual desire within myself around certain streets in Portland. And so there's a reason why that city suffers a lot of issues. It's because it's purging massive primal energy and a lot of it is intoxicating. It's not healthy. A lot of people, what I talk about with energy and some of these things going on, it's way over people's heads. And it, it really is no, no business to me what you think of this podcast because your, your, your support or lack of support isn't going to dictate whether or not more of these get produced. A lot more of these are going to get produced. And I'd like to know that I'm helping some women or men out there understand themselves as, as they seek to become more aligned with their conscious self. And... <laughs> evolve their own sexuality to that of, of one that's so easily controlled by this beast system and beast world. <clears throat> when you think about a lot of your sexual relationships with other people, do, do you look back at those experiences as experiences of two human beings truly loving each other as powerful souls? Or do you see it as a lustful experience? Whether it was the other person lusting after you, your ass, the way they had sex with you, how quick it was, how rough... And, 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 and your own desire as well. Be honest with yourself, women. Do you like it when a guy takes control? And if the answer is yes, does this say anything about the physical realms that we live in? Because there's no way in hell I'm going to get an answer, a real answer in public. And there's no doubt in my mind that I've lost a lot of people by even bringing up these issues. But you know as well as I know that the flesh can be deceiving and lead us into these uh, predicaments. And what I want people to understand is that there truly are other forces in this universe. They're playing a huge role in our relationships. When people don't understand this and they don't understand why they're attracted to certain people that ultimately are bad for them to the point where, you know, they have the most powerful orgasm of all time with the biggest creep of all time uh, to not even understand that buttons can be pushed just like emotional buttons that can literally keep a woman or a man, an actual sex slave to another human being that actually is being controlled by an entity. Now, as far as, far as how one could be targeted by archons and why could deal with their soul path and what they're here on this planet to do, uh, but in general, just being a male or female, whether you have uh, you know eggs or sperm, whether you have penis or vagina, that is energy that plenty of entities, both male and female, would love to just harvest and take back to their spacecraft. And so in the world of sexuality, procreation, consciousness, and I do believe consciousness can be uh, transferred as well as entities and other things through the act of sex. I think this is pretty much common knowledge by now, especially when you have drugs and alcohol combined. Earth is definitely a, a playland for the sexually deviant archons that love using the human beings that are on this planet uh, as um, as biological computers that they control by remote control. Uh, I, I think that as time goes on, people are going to become more aware of this, but overall, there is going to continue to be just a massive lack of awareness as long as we're on this planet. 
I think that we need to step back from our attachments, that the women of the world are going to figure this out and become more conscious. And a lot of us as men, we're going to have to continue to go our own way and continue to live disciplined lives. We're not so easily duped into situations uh, where we're letting women emotionally control us, get inside our head, uh, buy us off, uh, hurt us repeatedly. Uh, and continue to act on behalf of uh, some other abusive dark feminine energy that is is very much alive on the planet at this time. Uh, we, we read about stories of women that are killing their kids and other forms of violence that are starting to take place on this planet. <clears throat> if only people would actually understand the world that they live in and understand that it isn't about blaming one sex, but, and I even looking at the female as separate from us, but a part of us, the feminine masculine within and understand this is just something that is manifesting in one particular gender. Uh, there is a, a psychosis that is taking place on the planet. Uh, it is procreating with dominant genes. Uh, there are aspects of female consciousness that have been duped into sexual fantasies involving extraterrestrials, either through channeling sessions or as simply as listening to Katy Perry's E.T., uh, there's something built into us as homo sapiens in this fallen realm uh, that is constantly being fucked over in different ways and in different sexual positions uh, by non-human energies and influences. And so the human affairs between man and woman is, is definitely full of action uh, beyond anything depicted in any movie, be it pornography or otherwise. Uh, the real... Um, transdimensional galactic species life form uh, overlay with humanity seems to be at a level that is just beyond what most people understand. But it's in our science fiction. Uh, it's in the psyche of mankind. It's just not, supposedly, it's just not happening in the physical world. People can easily call something sci-fi. People can easily call something fiction. You see how people gravitate to horror films and even films like Star Wars depicting different forms of life or humanoids for that matter. Ultimately, there's a lot more to what makes us tick. Uh, men and women both have great potential to evolve beyond um, their own sexual wiring that keeps them Constantly chasing empty sexual experiences with other people or constantly in a world where their value comes from selling their own sexuality. Uh, these are animalistic ways of looking at energy. And it's almost cannibalistic, especially when you're dealing with using people and when you're dealing with prostitution energy. Uh, because prostitution energy has basically dominated most human relationships and we have not seen the female population really show appreciation for the sacred masculine uh, Although we are seeing many people appreciate the divine feminine, but the divine masculine uh, seems to be forgotten. This is really showing us, giving us a glimpse of things to come on the planet later on as a result of where consciousness actually is. And the verdict isn't very good. And there's more than one reason to go off grid and get away from some of these dense population centers. Unfortunately, warning people about the future and some of these things is inherently seen as evil and negative, and that is where the sacred masculine uh, is defecated on. So we're going to have to continue this conversation another time and go deeper into the subject of uh, arconic or whatever you want to call it intrusion into human relationships, and how to free ourselves from this matrix. This podcast was centering around how some of the women on this planet allow themselves to be agents of this matrix, and how some men that don't understand how they're controlled by their own sexuality are controlled, controlled by archons, through their desire to be uh, popular with females, and to be able to procreate with females, and so we talked a little bit about how certain behaviors are rewarded in this realm and certain behaviors and actions are not recognized by females. As a result, we end up with a certain type of planet with a certain consciousness of uh, babies uh, and also little girls and little boys. It's all in response to the partners that people voluntarily chose to pick. The world right now is simply the end result of 
many generations that have been under some form of hypnosis for some time. Uh, We'll continue this topic as the podcasts go on.